Hey folks, we're back again. Okay, time for another video. Hey, we get requests all the time, uh, questions and, and um, comments from you guys. You'd like to see a little bit more of actual sign making, me carving and, and actually getting into the process. And we've done that many times, but I want to try and maybe do that a little bit more. So I thought this was a good opportunity because I just got an order for a sign that I need to match um, another sign. It's over in Southern California, and I'm going to show this picture. This is the picture that they sent me that they needed me to, to match up. I don't know if you can get in on that, Dad. You're in on that? Okay. Yeah, it, it looks good, John. So this is obviously a stop sign. This is um, I, I, it's somewhere over in, in California, and it's 30 inches by 30 inches, so uh, octagon 30 by 30. So I'm going to, this video is going to be dedicated on making this sign. I've got to match this. Now, this particular sign, obviously red background, and everything else is painted white. Like you guys know, most of the time I don't get involved in really coloring my signs too much other than what I can do with, with my spray ink which I do have red spray ink, and that's what I'm going to do on this one. But this particular sign, I'm going to make unfinished other than the red ink, and the customer is actually going to do all of the white, which is painting the surface of the edges, the back, and the, and the actual surface of the letters. So I've already kind of started on it, um, and I'll, I'll show you what I've got here right now. So this is, uh, this is the board. I know it's kind of... Kind of big, Dad. I don't know if you're going to have to back up. Can you no, see it? No, I got right? it. I got it fine, son. Okay, so what we have here is we've got 30 inches by 30 inches uh, octagon, obviously, and I, I matched up the letters pretty well. Now, so um, I, for you guys that haven't seen it on our video number, I believe it's 75 and 76, I show how I laminate these boards. This is actually. Uh, Redwood uh, two by fours, and I think this, I actually used a couple two by sixes. So it's a mixture of two by fours and two by sixes. I used Gorilla Glue, but anyway, watch 75 and 76, and it'll show you how, actually how I laminate these boards together. Um, and so I got it all sanded down. This is basically all going to be background, just like the picture and red. Now, how I did these letters is a little bit different than what I've done, what I may have shown you guys in the past. So if you watch, uh, go back and watch our videos number, gosh, what was it, 25? Video number 26, actually. I was doing a big sign, and if you watch that video, you'll see I actually printed the letters out and blew them up on paper. Then I used carbon paper underneath, and I traced them right on the board. Well, that was long before we got a laser. So now that we actually have a laser, um, I actually, we actually make our own layout letters. So these are much like our regular layout letters, but I can pick whatever font I want. I can squeeze them. I can, you know, uh, condense them or expand them out. So this is how I laid these out. Um, I found the font that the, that uh, matched up the font uh, off of my original, uh, my original sign. And then actually the, the guy that, that I got the order from, I had him giving me dimensions on the border on this, how wide each of the letters were, how wide it was. He actually had the sample right in front of him. So I gave, have him give me all these measurements so that this will be virtually identical to the ones that he already has. Um, and that's, that's the goal here is, is so that they look pretty much identical one way or the other. So these letters, so you guys know, we do have the capability, if you have a special sign, a customer that wants a special font, and they, they need these letters that you guys don't have, we do have the availability to cut them on the laser, so we can do that for you if you need any help, what, have any questions on special fonts or anything. Is this one-sided sign, son? Yeah, this one is just going to be one-sided because it's actually like this. It's going to be mounted to a, to a post. So You're going to give yeah. them some idea of what you get for a sign this, like this? Hmm, that's a really good question. I th let me look. This sign, I charged um, $325 for this sign and then uh, $30 to ship it because it's just going from here, from Arizona to uh, Southern California. So I've, I may be really close on the shipping. I should have charged maybe a little bit more, but $335 for the sign, which isn't bad considering... Um, 
that the layout was fairly easy. It's going to be mostly background. Um, and it's unfinished. All I've got to do is spray my red and then... What do you figure total much, time you're going to have in it? Rough, um, just a rough estimate. Probably going to be, I don't know, five, six hours, something like that. Maybe a, maybe seven or eight, but I've only really in the manufacturer of the board up to this point right now, which is really kind of the hardest point uh, part of, of putting the board together, sanding it down and all that. I probably got about two or three hours in there. So you're going you're gonna to yeah, make somewhere around $60, $70 an hour. Then. Yeah, I may have seven or eight hours once I'm all done. You guys will kind of see it progress. I'm not going to do this real time on the time lapse like we've done in the past, but I am going to do it in stages and you're going to see each stage exactly how I do it. Now this particular one, I was going to actually wait a little while to to talk about it when I get to that part but the background you guys can't tell on this picture but the background on this on this sign here was sandblasted now many of you know what a sandblasted background look like but some of you may not if you've ever and most of you probably have seen it but if you've ever seen a sign where when you look at it close the background has the grain kind of standing out it almost has a three-dimensional look and the grain stands out Chances are that was sandblasted. The way that process works is the sand blasts away everything that's softer and the harder grain tends to stand out. So what I'm going to do on this, I'm not going to sandblast it, but I'm going to use a technique that comes close to emulating what a sandblasting background looks like. I've done it a few times in the past, but I don't think I've ever done it on video. So I'm kind of looking forward to sharing that with you guys and showing you how that's actually done. So. I think, um, what am I forgetting on the setup? I think that's about it. I think I've gone over pretty much everything. So what we're going to do now is, is go ahead and set this thing up and start carving on it. And we'll show you each stage as we go through each stage exactly how I do it. So I guess that's about it. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, I want to get, uh, I want to get started on carving this sign. So just a couple things real quick. Um, uh, and you guys know this pretty much my process here. Um, I want to definitely clean off this base. Um, sorry about that, Dad. I messed you up on, on your. So nope. I'm just going to spray a little bit of silicone spray on there and just kind of wipe that base off. Make sure that there's no uh, no problems with that. Another thing about this base that we created that you guys know that um, actually we've been. Uh, a lot of people have, have requested these bases. Um, that was kind of a unintended consequence kind of thing. If you look at the side of this base, it's got something that I put on there. It's just called moleskin, and it's adhesive. And I used to use this because this base in the summertime out here in Arizona would get real warm. Well, now the fact that my handles are out here, that's not an issue at all. So that's almost a, a real plus is the fact that I don't a actually have my hand right on the edge of this router that gets hot in the summertime. So that's kind of a, a cool little extra thing. You guys may not have that issue, but out here in Arizona in the summertime, we definitely do. So, okay, so I got my base ready to go. My depth is pretty much set. I'm set at about a quarter of an inch on that. Um, because I won't have any issues, obviously, with, uh, with room around my letters. So let me turn my light on. And um, we're going to fire up this router and get carving. Uh, I'm going to zoom over and show that light setup for just oh, yeah. a second. That, you know, and, and we do, that reminds me, Dad. We do get questions on uh, lighting once in a while. All different kinds of lighting that I use. But this is, uh, a lot of times, this is kind of what I go back to, is just a simple little clamp light. And uh, But there are tons of different uh, kind of snake lights and different kinds of lights out there. So I encourage, you know, one of the things that I do when I go to places like Harbor Freight or Lowe's or uh, Home Depot or whatever, I constantly go into the lighting session and see what kind of uh, different lighting they have little twist lighting or the LED lights and all kinds of different things so you know be uh, just just kind of keep your eyes open and and look for different ways to to light your uh, light your your board when you're carving because I need light directly on that router bit when I'm carving so anyway all right we'll get uh, that's enough yapping let's get to carving here let's get it going
Why don't you go ahead and card the O, son? I zoomed back out okay. so, so we get a little bit better view from a, <clears throat> a long distance view, a little bit better view of the carving. Okay. I had it on a close up for the first letter. Yeah, I had to move the board a little bit in order to That's all right. I'll get, just get in position here. I'll just change the focus on the camera. Sometimes I forget I can actually talk while I'm routing here. You guys might notice that as I'm following that line, I'll, sometimes I'll leave a little block on the edge and then go back and kind of take just a hair off to try and straighten up that line a little bit. I would rather error to the outside on outset letters than to the inside for obvious reasons. But if you leave just a, just a little bit of black on there too, it really doesn't make much of a difference in the overall look of the letter. What I'm more concerned about is a, is a smooth line and not too many bobbles in there. I want to try to eliminate that as much as possible. That's not too bad. That new rider base seems to help that too, doesn't it? Say again, Dad? See, that new rider base seems to help your visibility on those... Uh, it does, making yeah. ...making a straight line. Yeah, a lot more visibility. And I'm, I'm still, still learning the feel of it, but I'm finding that the more I can guide that router base and be, really be in contact with the board, the, more, the better control I have. You'll notice that I, I've got both hands flat on the board. That allows me a little bit better control than if I had, for instance, if I had just my handles, my hands up here, I don't think I'd have the control that I do by having contact with the board and the base at the same time. That's a good point.
the little bubbles in there on that line I want to try and smooth out. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, guys, I think you got the idea of, of what's going on there. I'm going to go ahead and, and finish up the rest of this, this uh, profiling on this P off camera, and then I'll come back on and we'll, uh, we'll do the setup for the background, and I'll cut my, my border edges on there and then uh, start taking some of that background out. So we'll be right back. Okay, so I finished up the profiling. Now I'm getting ready to set up and do my background. Uh, I wanted to just go over one little tiny thing in case you guys don't know and, and we never know who's going to see what videos in what order. But the bit that I, this is the bit that I have in my hand here is the bit that I used for the profiling and it's our profile bit. So um, if you watch any of our other videos, we probably talk a lot about the profile bit, but just in case you were wondering what bit I was using to actually cut the the uh, outset letters there, it's it's this profile bit. Move so, it in a little bit closer oh, to, the, uh, to the router bit. To the router yeah. bit? Yeah, right, because that's what I'm focused on. Oh, okay, gotcha. So that's our, our standard that's profile, profile bit. bit, okay? So I'm going to move that out of the way. Now, you guys know this bit. This is our standard background bit, 90 degree V-groove background bit. This is what we use most of the time. It's quarter inch uh, di cutting diameter, quarter inch shank. But because this particular sign is big and it has so much background to take out, I'm not going to use this, our standard uh, 90 degree uh, bit here. Um, I'm going to use the one that's in this router right now, which is uh, 90 degree, but it's a 3 8 um, cutting diameter, still quarter inch shank. You might tell them we don't have that on the website. Yeah, that's way. not a standard bit for us, but honestly, that kind of bit, um, you can probably get a lot of different places. Uh, it's not that tough to find. Uh, the smaller ones that we have on the website they're much tougher to find but this bit is uh, gosh i probably had this bit 20 years and i've only used it maybe a dozen times yeah and you so, inherited it for me and i had it for 10. <laughs> yeah yeah so we've had it around for a long time uh it still cuts pretty good because i don't use it that often that's why it's not really a standard bit but in a situation like this it's going to take that wood out a lot faster for me a lot less passes so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to set up and first thing I'm going to do is cut the border all the way around uh, so then I'll know what what I have to take out. And you can see I've already drawn the lines. So I'm going to set up, uh, set up here. I've already got my depth set at somewhere around a quarter of an inch, something like that. So, Dad, if you can just follow me here. I'll try, son. Okay. I'm going to set up here. So now... This is a technique that you guys have seen me use on a few of the other videos where my hand is actually going to follow, my right hand is going to follow the edge of this board all the way around. I'm going to cut these one at a time and then rotate and cut another one. And that's going to help me hold this straight line as I'm coming down the board. And you guys have seen me do this before, but probably not quite in this context on a, on a fairly good side. Now the side. reason you went to a bigger router? The reason I went to a bigger router is the router I was using before, good question. I know somebody else was probably thinking that. The reason I went to a bigger router is because it's going to take a lot more power in order to take out all this, uh, all of this material. That little palm router that I was using before, the little DeWalt uh, DWP611, I only use that for my detailed stuff on my letters. Anytime I'm taking out background or I'm doing scalloping or, or chamfering, beveling, you know, that kind of thing, I generally use a bigger router. This is a, a big DeWalt. Obviously, you see what number it is. And uh, it's a great little router, a great good size router, actually. Uh, we put different handles on it because we just like these handles. But um, but this is the you wouldn't want to do the kind of cut that I'm going to do here with that small router. It just overworks it way too much. So you want something that's got some some beef to it in order to take out a cut like what I'm doing now.
So good answer. That answer you, that good answer. answer. Your, that answer your question. <laughs> Peanut gallery. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm still with you, son. You sure make that look easy. Yeah. It is. As I made it look easy when I taught you. Tough going right through the middle of the knot there. I heard it sing when you went through the knot. I thought the phone was ringing. Yeah. That one was a little tough. It, it looks good though. Yeah, it's in there all right. You really have to take your time when you're when you're doing this. Don't be in a hurry. Like you saw me do right there, I can start away from it and then come in and get my hand set right on that edge, right where I want it. Dad. I'm going to do one more, Dad. Okay, son. I'm with you. Woo. Looking good. All right, one more. After you get that one done, you're going to shut her down and uh, make some changes? Yeah. Cut that up just a little. That's the nice thing about using your fingers for a straight edge like that. You can go right back down that line with no problem at all. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. You really got to have a grip on that router when you're when you're doing that. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to uh, I'm going to finish the rest of these lines, these outside lines, up. Uh, off camera and uh, then we're going to go to a second video because this is we've got a lot more operations to do so um, what do you uh, got another couple hours in this sun um yeah probably something like that with the you know with the spraying and, and yeah. all the background cleanup and the spraying and the sand yeah the the longest part is probably going to be the background is taking this background out and like i said well you I, won't show that all on one video you'll just show a good portion of it oh yeah i'll show plenty of it so guys so you guys can get an idea of how i do it because again i want to kind of emulate that whole sandblasting background look so i'll show you how i do that but um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. We've got to be somewhere around 30 minutes. So uh, I'll do the rest of these lines offline, uh, uh, off camera, excuse me. Then I'll come back on the next video in this series. And I, we should be able to wrap this series up in just two videos. And uh, we'll get this, the rest of this wood all taken out there and, and uh, get this thing fixed up.
uh, finished up hopefully on okay, the next Okay, we'll video. get to the good stuff in the next one then. All right. All right, I'm going to shut her down. There we go. See Bingo. you next time.